we are reading the very last chapter, chapter 60 of Evernight by Ross Mackenzie. It is called Onward. Lara stood at the bow of her new boat, closed her eyes and felt the wind flowing through her dark curls. The sunlight was warm on her skin and it glittered on the peaks of the waves and on Lara's locket. She wore it on the outside of her shirt now, no longer wishing to hide it away. They, they had been three days at sea, still a fair sail yet to Westerly Witch. The boat was laden with slum folk, as many of the cursed and their families as could fit safely. They looked so frightened, and Lara could understand why. Hags were strange, dangerous creatures to these coves, and they'd placed their faith in Lara and her friends, in hags, because the only other choice was to face trial and probably be hanged. There would be more trips to come, more boatloads of terrified people forced to leave their homes. Lara heard lots of them muttering about the king with hate in their voices. He's made a mistake, said Bernie, joining Lara. He's underestimated the power of ordinary folk. Things are going to get interesting, girl. You mark my words. Is the Evernight gone for good? said Lara. The doomsday spell has it under control, said Bernie, and I think that's the best we can hope for. Bernie, what'll happen to all of these poor people? Well, we'll take care of them till it's safe for them to go home. Double Eight and Joe came striding over the deck, pointing up to the blue sky. What a sight for sore eyes that is, said Joe. I never, I thought I'd never see the sun again. I wish I could have been there for you, Joe, said Lara, when Granny passed. He stared up towards the horizon. She loved you, Lara. You know that, right? Lara felt the urge to hug him, and she could not fight it. Hell's teeth, Joe exclaimed. You'll pop my ribs. Thank you, Joe, for everything you did. If it hadn't been for you, I'd be dead for one thing, said Double Eight. How's the soul settling in? Lara asked him with a smile. Double Eight tapped his chest. Just fine. No more hunger? No, no more hunger, Lara. Lara tilted her head. But, Double Eight shrugged. But, well, I wanted to run away, Lara. And I've got you and the others to help me get used to my new life. It might sound mad to you, but there are an awful lot of white witches out there who have never even considered what it means to be free and whole and able to think and question and wonder. What are they feeling now? What will happen to them? They're all alone. Lara took his hand. I don't think anything will ever be the same, she said, for any of us. And I don't think anyone knows what's going to happen next. But we made it through, didn't we? We survived. And so will those white witches who want to be free. He nodded and Lara turned back to the sea. So much had changed. She did not recognise the girl from the sewers anymore. Her old life seemed like it had happened to someone else. She had spent her entire existence wondering who she was, where she belonged. And now that she'd found out, it felt almost as if she'd lost as much as she'd gained. She could never return to those simple days. But she'd look forward, not back, and she'd embrace the person she was meant to be, the witch she could become, as frightening as it still seemed. There was so much to learn, such a journey to come, and the thought of it made her feel small. As she watched the sun-gilded waves tumble and roll beneath the boat, her hands went to her pockets, and she remembered the feeling of Moonwing there, fluttering and twitching. He had been a wondrous object, the most magical thing she would ever encounter. And she was going to miss him dearly. But there was so much more magic out there, an entire world of it waiting to be discovered. So Larabel Fox smiled and felt the sea spray on her face and sailed towards tomorrow. <laughs>